Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. Today we are on the 16th of July 2024 and around the table just Mark and me. Hello Mark. On the agenda today we'll talk about the infra migration to JDK 17, of course the updates for the various container images, uh, the work in progress on images, the spring security uh, migration for Jenkins and maybe Java 21 support the 2 plus 2 plus 2 if there's anything new to discuss. Let's get started. Uh, so regarding the infra migration to JDK 17, well, it's linked to the fact that the um, weeklies uh, now are requiring uh, JDK 17 and have to be built with JDK 17. Uh, I forgot the date uh, this started, but it was a few weeks ago. And so, yeah, four weeks ago. Okay, thank you, Mark. I can still count on my fingers. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Um, so we had the infrastructure team had to migrate some of the services so that the weekly is now built with JDK 17. So we'll have a look at the help desk ticket first to have a glimpse at what was needed and why. So it was on June 12, uh, Damien created this uh, ticket because the weekly release now needs JDK 17 at least to run. And so why not build it with JDK 17 too? Uh, nothing changed in the code so far, Mark. I don't think there is anything specific to JDK 17 in the latest weeklies, or am I wrong? So, no, this and this is correctly closed, right? So, so we have switched weekly core release to drop Java 11, and that's done, and it's working. And we've retained JDK 11 in the next LTS baseline. So, 2.462.1 will build with Java 11 and will continue to support Java 11 for its 12 week life cycle. Uh, so, and that's actually already been merged so that yeah. basically we removed Java 11 support for weekly. Then on the stable 2.462.1 release branch, I put it back and it's been reviewed, merged. So we, we will continue next week. We'll release a 2.462 release candidate. It will include Java 11 support. And two weeks after that, we'll release the dot one as the full release. So did, did that answer your question? Yes, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. And so this one was about the packaging. So I think this one solved the first one more or less. Uh, what was it? No, it was already something after all was modified. Uh, that was an automatic uh, PR by update CLI to push the latest version of the JDK to 17 dot something. So now, by right. default, four weeklies we built with uh, JDK 17. Mark, right. so far, have you heard anyone complaining about the loss of uh, week, uh, JDK 11 for weeklies? I haven't seen anything. No, although I do have another topic to put on our agenda. Oh, uh, oh dear, and it's just half my brain. Okay, it was... Oh, ah. It was... Java... Oh, it'll come back. Sorry, I Oops, don't so remember... There's a there's a topic I need to add. When I think of it next, I'll write it on a piece of paper here, and we'll we'll get to it. Yeah, thank you, Mark. So so as far as I know, the builds, the weekly builds, are set. However, and and there, I think there are still one or more jobs that are running out there that are not yet requiring Java 17. I can give you a, a specific example that's intentional. Mm -hmm. The plugin installation manager tool today builds with Java 11 and it builds with Java 11 because it and supports Java 11. It builds with Java 11 and supports Java 11 because it is bundled into the LTS container images. Oh. And therefore, if we were to require Java 17, we would break LTS users. So we can't require Java 17 and plugin installation manager tool until we require Java 17 in an LTS release. And so that's that's one that I've got to put into the 2 plus 2 plus 2 yeah. uh, document to remind us don't upgrade certain things prematurely. They have to be done after 
after LTS is delivering at or after LTS delivery of support of that new or requirement of that new Java version. Okay. Um, do we have a clear view of what should be kept with JDK 11 or what should be upgraded uh, along the way? Or I, is that something we'll discover? I'm sure, I'm sure we don't, the, the, the global we does not. I think I have a good ability to reason about it and uh -huh. think about it and then make reasoned pull requests for the things that, that might need it and avoid them on the things that should not be upgraded. But no, we don't have a document that describes that. And that's what the two plus two plus two document needs to be added to. So it's yeah. part of this discovery process. Because for JDK 23, the question will have to be asked once again, what should be upgraded and what sh should be upgraded and what should be kept as is. Yeah, um, thankfully it's 25, not 23, oh, but yes, yeah, you're I'm, right. I'm so impatient. In fact, you know, right. there is some kind of a counter on Twitter saying, oh, 62 days before JDK 23. So I want it, I want right. it, I want it. Right, it's exactly. It's new and shiny, but no. Right. Okay. So, and we, ju you just said it, it came to mind and left again. There oh, was, no. there is something. Oh yes. Tomorrow is Oracle critical patch update mm. and Oracle yes. critical patch update means Lots that, uh, a new Java version will come out for 11, 17 and 21. 21. Yeah. And now, thankfully we'll have Damien's estimate is we you well let's put could you put a separate item at the bottom of our list on this agenda Oracle critical patch update and let's just yeah, be should. sure that we put it there it's something that we should probably put on our agenda roughly every three months just to remind ourselves it's already on the Jenkins infra calendar every three months critical oh. yeah critical patch update yeah uh so yeah tomorrow in a way or another we should add it to our discussion in there right let's uh, just be sure it's an agenda item we'll get to it when, before this meeting's done yeah the great blog i'm happy that you found it uh finally <laughs> me too <laughs> you bet now um anything else mark regarding the migration to jdk 17 uh, we need to do a, a, a detailed review of our tooling uh, to see which things are still running Java 11 mm -hmm. and uh, get them off Java 11 uh, as appropriate. We also need as a next step, as a second bullet item here, we need to get a discuss and agree on a plan for the removal of Java 11 from uh, from our CI infrastructure because removal is different than end of life, right? For us, removal really will mean we, we stop providing at some point a copy of Java 11 to be used at all. And the logic there is that if we're not going to support it, we should eventually not have it available for people to use. Java 8, um, now the, the open question there is Java 11 is still supported by the upstream providers. They've extended its life. Mm -hmm. We will not extend its life. Java 8 is still provide pro, up, supported by upstream, pro, upstream providers. And therefore, we haven't removed Java 8, and it would be okay if we didn't remove Java 11 so long as the upstream providers continue to patch it. The problem is when they stop patching it, we can no longer confidently leave it on our infrastructure because we can't predict what security vulnerabilities will be discovered and not fixed. When you say up upstream providers, is that only Oracle or uh, no, no, that... e Eclipse Eclipse Demeron has stated okay. that they will continue to support Java 11. Uh, they've changed they've changed their answer in that they've said that they will continue to support Java 11. I think into 2026. Okay, because I was thinking of I think Oracle and maybe all the vendors 
if you pay them enough money, they will keep. Right, you. and um, and no, this is yeah, I agree. When when we get into that mode, it's end of life. But if I look at yeah, yeah. So on the end of life date page, it says that Java 11 from Timurin will continue to be supported until October of 2027. So they've extended its life. Okay. Now that's, I'm, I'm delighted they've extended it. We're not extending our life. Two plus two plus two really means we will drop things before the upstream providers drop them. No regrets. And, no and with, with the spring security framework change, we have to drop, stop supporting Java 11. There's no choice. Got it. Okay. Yep. Thanks a lot, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, now, regarding the um, quartz. Um, so, new container images. So, for the latest LTS 2.452.3, uh, so you made, you made a live. Uh, as always, uh, pretty entertaining and informative, I would say, regarding the, the changes for the core, not for the Docker image, of course. So I didn't uh, see anything really groundbreaking. Uh, we had a few bumps here and there for the versions of Debian, UB8, 9, and Alpine. That's all that I spotted. Uh, so nothing major. It should work as it used to do for you, except for the changes that happened in the core, of course. And there are way more changes in the core than just for the container image. Mm, okay. Now for the weeklies, we were not able to have a meeting two weeks ago. So there are four versions of the weeklies. And most of the changes in these weeklies regard uh, are about bumps for the um, uh, various Linux distribution for Alpine, UB8, 9, Hookworm. And something that you added, Mark, a uh, work from uh, Valentin Delay. The finish date to copy reference file and nothing major, uh, but it was uh, merged today or the day before, I guess, okay. and it won't change much for standard users like me. No, it only add, for... adds one more line of text to the uh, to a log file that was already having start time logged to it. No problem. Yeah, so nothing major. Now for the Jenkins agents, we had four releases for the SSH agent. So there also we had some bumps of the version for Debian Alpine. And um, something that won't change anything for the end users. We changed something in the way we generate the Docker images, more or less. And some of the changes were reverted. So some changes were introduced in 5.43 and were uh, reverted in 5.44. It was about Windows, I guess. Um, is uh, the base image for the Windows image. Um, and so nothing much changes. As for the Docker agent, there also we have a few version bumps and some changes in the way that the images are built because we include, for example, the Temerin version pardon for a BTLI manifest, nothing major once again. And the only fix I saw was the um, Debian base Docker image label. That was, I can't remember just what was the um, the, the reason of, of the figure. Something was not working for quite a while and it has been changed with just one liner and now it's better. But frankly, I would not be able to explain what was going on. Only thing for people who got it. Mark, um, do you know what it was really about? It's about hand charts. I'm not a specialist on that. So, so this one... Um... Uh, so if you look at the diffs, you can see what happened. So yeah. files change. What happened is we we had two repositories previously where we were recording, oh. uh, creating container images for agents. Uh, and two repositories, we've switched now, we've unified them, thanks to Hervé's work, to a single repository. But this was referring to the old repository. And the change points it to the new repository. So it may be that what we ought to do is do a global search through mm -hmm. the entire Jenkins CI um, that would be a good idea. repositories for the left-hand side. Because yep, if there's a good. reference to the left-hand side, we'll make everybody happier if we switch it to be the right-hand side because the left-hand side is no more, right? I think if, if it hasn't been archived... It should be. 
it might be in, in any case it is no longer current right all changes are happening in the thing that's described on the right hand side so thank you for explaining in fact when i read i first read this uh files change i understood what it was about but i just don't understand what was broken <laughs> right <laughs> well and and there i suspect what was broken is some some tooling was reading this value the org.opencontainers.image.source and then trying to use that value to generate it useful information and because the value was wrong they're broken so maybe just metadata in the docker hub or something like that. well if if you look back at the conversation i think the the author submits or somebody submits to say why yes so renovate apparently was reading it oh. and you and that's cool i'm glad they use it that's great so so renovate was using it to detect the change log and we like renovate to do those kind of things for us so that's very good okay thanks Claude mark for the explanation uh now on the work in progress on images nothing major on controller and uh, nothing either on docker SSH agent and for docker agent i just saw two things uh, one regarding windows so adding a parallel method to build thanks to build.ps1 and another one uh, which is a work started by Hervé who wants to align the way we build uh, as with the docker SSH agent repo so that's a global refactoring it's only the beginning I've been told he has lots of other, other ideas to factorize and make um, the code smaller uh, so that whenever we make one change, it just has um, consequences on all the Docker files, for example. So that doesn't look like much, but it's the beginning of something much bigger. More on that later on, uh, if ever I manage to understand what's going on. Now, uh, Spring Security, yoo-hoo. So the Spring project made an announcement of the end of life of the 5.x. Uh, versions of their project and the thing is we have to move to uh, spring security 6.x because it will be end of life this 5.x and in order to do that we have to change quite a lot of things we have to move to jdk 17 we have to move the file upload 2.x to, uh, to 1.x to 2.x i think and so on and so on and the biggest part is about getting uh, JD12 and EE9 uh, in Jenkins Weekly. And it's a huge work, um, mostly done by Basil Crow, if I'm not mistaken. And it's progressing uh, pretty well, I may say. But I see that from my chair, uh, Mark, you know way more than I do about that. Could you tell us a few things about that? Yeah, so we're, we're very much in progress. Java, Java 17 is required, JD12 plus EE8 is looking pretty good to arrive in, in Jenkins Weekly during July. Basel's identified many tasks or several tasks that need to be performed, uh, but we're not terribly worried by those tasks. Uh, the next step, Java Jetty 12 plus EE9 mm -hmm. is larger. We don't have a date for it yet, but it needs to be before the mid-September selection of the next LTS baseline. So our goal is sometime in August or early September. Okay, thank you. It's still running in your environment, right? It is, and I'm updating regularly. Actually, up or up a little up above, just off the off your off the screen, identify tasks for the required Java 17 yeah. step. I think that's done. No. You can delete that. Yeah. But test driving the prototype is a very good thing. Uh, it it I regularly update it, and I've been running it and i continue to run it and i'm actually quite quite pleased with it um i still need to do a, a, a thorough testing of forms because as noted there i've i've tested forms in all of my normal interactive use what i haven't done is attempted to find every form in the system and enter the data and see that it works so exhaustive testing hasn't hasn't been done but it's it's working very very well for me Good to hear. Thank you. Um, now, we created a sample that builds a Docker container um, with this uh, jar generated by Bethel work. And unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. I'm I'm sorry, but I have to say it. It's broken. 
Um, yeah, that's been 14 age. And why, you may ask? Um, the Jenkins CLI um, doesn't work, tool doesn't work anymore. Uh, it has been the case for two weeks or so. And I don't know why, to be honest. Um, I tried um, to build uh, the Jenkins CLI uh, tool in a Docker image and it doesn't work either. The test failed. So I have to investigate more to know why it's failing and then maybe propose a correction and then build again uh, this tool. Even if nobody uses the tool, that's pretty handy because we found out something else that uh, doesn't work. So yes, we can remove the last successful build. It was a few weeks ago, unfortunately. So let's remove all of that. Well, okay, so so this one, when you say, and and I believe you documented the CLI, the yeah. CLI break, was it the, the plugin installation manager tool that breaks or it's actually Jenkins CLI, the thing that allows me to call into Jenkins to perform command light operations? Uh, from the top of my head, I think it's a CLI. Uh, lo, 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 lo. Where could I find it? Yeah, in the actions, maybe. So it's Jenkins plugin. Okay, so this is the plugin installation manager tool. Interesting. Yeah. Usage of undefined variable Jenkins test version. Okay. No, it's not it's just a warning. I should get rid oh, of that. Oh, that's okay. So that's that, that's that not... the main error is there. Provider okay. jar not found. Failed the process. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And... So so this needs more investigation. That's that's definitely because it's building on my machine, and as soon as I'm uh, using a Docker image to build it, it doesn't build anymore. But we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So. So something surprising there. I'm I'm absolutely well. The way I manage my plugins, I don't do them inside the container image the way you do. So maybe that's why I'm not seeing the problem. The way I manage my plugin updates right now is intentionally outside the container definition, um, so that I have the files already copied locally on my computer and I copy them in that there's a long rather dark and sort of shameful explanation for why I do it that way it has to do with me wanting to be sure that I was testing large file support with the git plugin oh, and so nice. it, it's not that I would recommend any other person do the thing that I'm doing it's rather that I needed it to serve my personal personal fixation on making sure large file support works well <laughs> I see uh okay um what's yeah, there's one thing that's strange though is that it's still building on the same project for the um, uh, latest lts you know so the same process works for the late right and well LTS. and and that's and that's a relief although it might be oh. worth you doing a it might be worth doing a pull request a draft pull request to try and uh -huh. see does it fail with jenkins weekly Oh. Is is the problem somehow associated with Jenkins Weekly? And if so, then that's more dramatic than if it's just associated with this this very special build. You're right. Uh, better see that. Okay, that's a good idea. Thanks a lot for suggesting, Mark. Um, so if you don't mind, let's go with uh, Java 21 support, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. I have to admit, I haven't looked at the JEP uh, lately. So, is there anything? Yeah. So, you... so I've I've made some improvements to the uh, to the JEP. I made some additions to it. Uh, there's still an awful lot more to be done there to describe all the things that need attention. Uh, but but it's had some progress since the last time we talked. Thank you, Mark. Mm. And the last thing you want us to talk about is the Oracle critical patch update, which will happen tomorrow. So, yeah. So, so here, um, and the the notes that are there 
underneath it are not relevant. Yeah, I was wondering. That's okay. Good. So critical. So so I'm assuming no emergency um, will be needed, right? I'm assuming that Oracle is not going to announce a zero day vulnerability or a very, very serious vulnerability, something like that. Their last many, many critical patch updates have been very, very reasonable and we could wait for Temerin, let Temerin do their do their regular release process, and then we update. And as as Damien noted, that's usually about a week after Oracle delivers the bits. We then see them in a Temerin build, and we are able to perform our updates. Yeah, uh, I guess that now we are almost rid of all the Docker uh, dependencies when it comes to using Temerin. I think we are using their binaries directly right. exactly. uh, because it could have it could add another one week uh if we were to use um uh, the docker images instead of the binaries but yeah i guess that's okay now uh right. i didn't see anything coming you know speaking of a new cve that would get patched with the oracle digital patch or whatever we'll see tomorrow and guess what we have to do Right. They'll they'll announce which bugs are fixed, which issues are fixed, et cetera, tomorrow. And usually if there's something really significant, that's the time when Eclipse Temerin and other providers have been forewarned and move very quickly to try to get their builds out shortly after Oracle does. You know, it's they'll do a they tend to do a coordinated release. Uh, they're much more likely to do a coordinated release if there were something serious, and that means we'll have them sooner. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll watch it tomorrow. Read the read the change logs, and and then decide on a pl plan of action. Um, by the way, I realized last week that that Temerin was an official uh, Docker project. I think that the right term, which means that it's Docker that built their. Temerin images, in fact, they're not Temerin themselves with Jenkins or another system. So I don't know what the, um, the process and how much time happens before uh, Docker builds their official images, but maybe that's one of the reasons why it takes a few days or even a week to have the Docker image once the binary is released. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we we lived in that world for a while as the Jenkins project where Docker was building our containers and we found that we had to have faster response time than the Docker project could do. They're, they're a very busy organization with lots of open source projects that they support. Uh, we're, uh, we're not their biggest and therefore we, we decided, and I think wisely so, we decided that we'll take responsibility to build our own container images. Yep. Yes, we're very much more reactive now. We can do it quicker, faster. I even say better. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, any other subjects you'd like to address, Mark? No, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for being here. The video should be available from 24 to 48 hours, and we should see each other 14 days from now uh, if the both of us are available. Thanks Great. a lot, Mark. Bye-bye.